Hello everybody, welcome to Drunk with Waffles and another speed paint. This one has a background, so stay tuned for that. It's going to be quite thrilling, I assume. <laughs> anyway, um, this illustration is based off of like selfies and like dressing room mirror selfies that you see on Instagram all the time. Anyway, I was I had a few ideas planned for different like fandom selfies. And the first one that I thought of was actually this one. And so it was the first one that I sat down and did. And I spent a very, very long time on this. Mostly because it is two characters. There's slight shading and a background. So uh, it's not something I'm used to. So, you know, it just takes a little bit longer to, you know, to get done and to, um, you know, do. Anyway, um, when I was going to do this selfie speed paint of frozen characters. Look at that. It's Elsa. I knew I didn't want to do them in their actual, you know, movie outfits. I wanted to, you know, modernize it since they are using a s cell phone to take a selfie and they're going to be in a dressing room. I thought, why not put some, you know, modern clothes on? And that was the entire, that's basically what I was thinking when I was drawing this. And I do have other um, ones planned. Like I really want to do a Joker and Harley selfie. I have a really good idea for that one. And it's probably gonna be like a two part selfie. So there's gonna be one, um, camera angle. <laughs> so, well, Harley's going to take one selfie and then someone else is going to take the other selfie, but I won't reveal that uh, because it's kind of like hidden in the pictures. It's like a two-part selfie thing. Anyway, I don't know if I'll do it, but it's it's just some ideas I have right now because I'm sort of in a, a little time zone between comics. I'm sort of taking a break because if I focus too much time on the comics, I'm going to get a little burnt out. So it's just a little part, little break from that. And uh, yeah, so I did use a reference for this picture. Um, I found some random mirror selfies of teenage girls. Um, I copied Elsa's pose almost directly. Um, is it paused or did I not? Oh no, it's just a little blip in the audio and I'm not going to edit it out because if you watched my uh, webcomics Q&A video, I actually cut out some of the little slow bits, but my I use Adobe Premiere Pro and it's an old version. I think it's CS4 or 5. Um, but sometimes when I export the video, if I've chopped the video in any way, it will just restart on both the chops. I don't know if that makes sense, but like each time I chop the video, that becomes the beginning of the video, even though it doesn't show me that in playback. It's just when I like encode it and export it. So I don't know why that is. So I just try to keep my editing to a minimum. So if there's any like little blank spots, that's why. Um, I don't remember what it's like. Oh, references. <laughs> I did use a reference for Elsa, like almost completely. She's from reference. Um, but in my reference, the girl standing next to the girl taking the picture, I, the pose is sort of boring. So I decided to put a little bit more of Anna flair into Anna. So I have her like sort of sticking out her butt and going, bleh. <laughs> so that's the idea behind that one. I thought that's something she would do if she was taking a selfie in the modern day. Um, as for the background, I have it so they're in a mirror. So it's like one of those like skinny dressing room mirrors. And then um, I also, I don't know if you could see it yet. I'm doing the line art, so I'm really zoomed in and you can't see. But uh, for the background, I sort of added a hanger on the top right of the picture. And on the bottom left, there's like sort of a, a little bench to sit down when you're like trying on some new pants or something. And then even later on, I do add some little accessories sitting on the um, the desk. <laughs> I'm just losing my thoughts. Uh, yeah, so there's gonna be stuff there because it just looked a little too blank. And I think a key to backgrounds is not too complicated, but not too empty either. So I wanted to make my background look, you know, like people actually had been there before. Whereas the background first started off very, very plain. It was just walls, mirror, and a bench. And so then later, I sort of, I don't, I think there's a word for it. I think it's like building your environment or something. So I added like, well, if Anna and Elsa were actually in a dressing room, what would be sitting on that bench? And I thought, oh, her keys and maybe her purse. Because whenever I go into a dressing room, I always make sure those are somewhere visible so that I don't forget them. So those are in there. There's a set of keys and her purse. I'm doing the line art. I'm actually using a brand new brush for this one. It's like a I bought it, who did I buy it from? I don't know, I'll have a link in the description to the gum road I bought it from, but it was highly recommended on different Instagrams. I think, yeah. So I'll have a link to that if you wanna check out where I got my brushes. Um, but this one is actually specially made for comics. So it's, I don't remember if it's anti-alias or not anti-alias, because I mixed that term up. 
But um, basically what it is is if you draw the line and you connect all the lines, you won't run into any problems where when you dump in the paint bucket tool in between the lines that it doesn't fill in the entire shape of it. You know how if, well, if you've done digital art ever, you've probably run into this, where you use the paint bucket tool on the line art layer and it left like white lines within the line art but outside of the color. It's the most frustrating thing in the world and I've... I usually combat it in different ways, like I'll usually either select the uh, colored layer, expand the selection, and then just dump it in there. That's one way to avoid it. That doesn't really make sense unless you know what I'm talking about. But with this um, specific brush, I don't have to do that. I just use the paint bucket tool and it goes straight to the line art and there's no little white cracks in between it. And it's, it's, it's kind of new to me, like this is the very first time I've ever used this brush. Um, so I was getting used to it throughout this whole illustration, and I kind of like it. It's not my favorite brush. I'm going to try out some new brushes also, because I think that Pat came with like over 100 brushes. So I got a lot of practicing to do. <laughs> um, as you see with the outfit, I modernized Anna's outfit, but I still wanted it to, like, you know, feel like Anna. So I decided to use her colors. Um, I fought with myself a little bit on this. Like, at first I had her shirt pink, and then I went black, and then I think I went pink again, and then I went black. And I'm like, I really don't know what color to use for her shirt. I think I ended up with black just because it was more neutral and not so like obvious and like in your face and then I painted the ribbon pink. <laughs> so that was still a little bit of a splash of her pink cape without it being, you know, overpowering. And then I also added a little bit of embroidery to her uh, shorts to sort of mimic her skirt without it being, you know, again, overbearing and in your face. <laughs> oh, I just darkened the shirt to a darker black. And I think I'm just about done coloring her. I just changed the color of the line art to something that more represents the skin color. Oh, my voice is going. Yeah, I could do this. I could do this. I think I'm more than halfway through. Yeah, I could do this. I added a little bit of blush and I shaded her hair. Because I think if you don't feel like shading anything, don't shade anything. But if you're only going to shade one thing, shade the hair. Because it is just a very... Uh, what, it's a complicated feature because there's all those strands like what you have over a hundred thousand strands of hair on your head or something so if there's something you're going to add a little extra detail to do the hair and also I like to add a uh, extra strands afterwards when I'm done with the illustration anyway here we are doing Elsa and so again I'm incorporating elements of her movie outfit but still sort of modernizing them if you will so like I use the same colors but I didn't use the same dress. That's basically it. Yeah. And I also gave her her purple eyeshadow because it really wouldn't look like Elsa without it. And it really doesn't look like Elsa when she has pink hair. So I had to add the white hair. So beautiful. Oh, here I ran into a disaster where I accidentally painted all the underneath line art. So I was like trying to fix that. And that's why there's all these marching ants all over the page. And I also colored in her earring. Oh, my throat. Sorry. <laughs> and painted her nails. And I also gave Anna some boots to sort of mimic the ones she wears in the movie, but also modernize them as well. And then I colored the uh, cell phone case. I had wasn't sure how I wanted the cell phone case to look, but I decided to go with just little snowflakes. And then I added, this is actually one of my favorite parts, to her bow. I added the like design on the edge of her cape. I thought that really added something. Like just a little pattern, like a little whoop. They're just pretty. I like it. <laughs> Um, hmm. Oh, now I'm coloring the background in the mirror. So I noticed that the mirror was pretty blank. And if it was a real mirror, you'd be able to see what was behind them. So I had to do that. And I actually added a sign because, you know, when you go into a dressing room and it's got a little sign and something about like, you know, you're only allowed to try on this many items and don't steal them or we'll be upset. We probably won't catch you, but we'll be upset. One of those signs. So I put one of those on there and I reversed it because it is in a mirror. So the words would all be backwards. So there's that. Here I added a, uh, in the reflection, some outfits that they maybe had tried on, but I accidentally painted those straight on the background layer, so I wasn't able to move them later when I drew them again on the front version of it. So like the not mirror version, I wasn't able to sort of, uh, I don't know if that's making sense, but because I 
painted them right on the layer, which you shouldn't do. You should always use extra layers. Painted it right on the background where there was a gradient. I couldn't really move it afterwards, so it had to stay where it was, even though it was kind of very sketchy, but that was it. Oh, here I'm adding stickers to the mirror. I got that idea from uh, Bad Girl of Burnside, the comic, the very first issue, I think it is. Uh, the, <laughs> the cover is actually a mirror selfie in, like, the, uh, what's it? The, the ooh, bathroom? Yeah. <laughs> So, and they had stickers, you know, that were trying to be peeled off. So I tried to mimic that in a way. And then here's where I realized that wall was very, very blank. And I decided to add pictures. So I sort of added Cinderella's castle. And then a, just like a wood plank shaped like a crown. I thought that was kind of cute. And something that would be in a little boutique dressing room. So there's that. I had a couple rugs underneath them. And added a lot of shine to the mirror so that it didn't look so... Like, they were just standing on the other side of an archway and said it was a mirror. Anyway, that is my finished illustration of my sort of Anna and Elsa mirror selfie. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching, and let me know if you liked it, and let me know what you'd like to see me draw in the future, and I'll see you guys all next week, and I hope you have a very delicious evening full of waffles. Bye!